my co-hosts, Kaylee McEnany and Harris Faulkner. And also joining us today, Fox Business anchor, host of American Dream Home on Fox Business, Cheryl Cassoni, and Brian Kilmeade, Fox & Friends co-host, host of the Brian Kilmeade Radio Show, and the host of One Nation. Now we begin with the fourth indictment against former President Donald Trump, a Georgia grand jury returning a 41-count indictment against the former president and 18 others. The district attorney wants to prosecute the 19 defendants all at once in front of the cameras in court. And she wants to do it within six months, putting this case on a direct collision course with the Republican primaries. Trump faces racketeering charges, something that's usually reserved for mob bosses, as well as numerous conspiracy and perjury charges. Brian, a lot happened on Fox & Friends today. You had uh, three hours of interviews and the like. What has stuck out to you this morning? What are your takeaways? Well, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things. I mean, we, the confusion on the indictment, the fact that it happens at night, the fact that they're, they have witnesses lined up and all of a sudden those witnesses are told, don't worry, we don't need you on Tuesday. What was the rush? You wait two and a half years, and you have to get this case forward right away on Monday night at 1030 at night. And then the question was, why did you post it? Why did Reuters do it? You screenshotted it. It's exact, almost exactly like the one that was released. I don't know. I'm not a clerk. I'm not a clerk. This is serious stuff. Are you kidding me? The president of the United States and 19 others. So I think it's going to be uh, extremely intense at the very least. Even if you look at the best case scenario, four cases, four weeks each. Uh, taking up the president's time, and even if he wants to campaign at night and sit in the courtroom during the day, you cannot say it's not going to affect the result of the next election. And guess who benefits? The guy that does not like to do interviews, cannot really pull off a speech, cannot ad lib a line, and then he has another excuse to sit in his basement like he did last time, hmm. and that is the president of the United States. Mm. Harris. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Leo Terrell had kind of a different take. He thinks that this is going to drag on. It has a lot of enduring effects of having to fly people all over the country to, to come in to testify in this case. And he says that's going to be a huge drag. And it's such a big ask to do 18 others outside of the man facing 13 of those 41 Just in Georgia. charges. Yeah. Just yeah. in Georgia. So, you know, when you look at that, that goes beyond the 2024 election. But then the question becomes, how much can Trump get out there? Because he will have to participate in his own legal battle, this one and the other three indictments. I'm sure you saw what Andy McCarthy has said, and that is that this probably carries the most legal peril. Leo Terrell didn't necessarily agree with that because it's going to take so long for us to actually see what they have and hear from all the witnesses. And Turley thinks the document's the biggest, uh, the hardest yeah. to beat. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, I mean, if this goes beyond 2024, it does ride past the primaries and past that general election. So I don't know if it interferes with it. I, I, we just don't know yet. I think in a way, but my point is we're going to be talking about the case. So Georgia, documents, whatever you want, Alvin Bragg. So what happens to those other GOP? We're not talking about the economy. We're not talking but what about happens to the other Republican candidates, too? Right. Because uh, all the oxygen gets sucked out nothing. of the room. Well, six months is unrealistic, to be clear. We had several legal experts on Fox Business this morning. You know, I love talking to lawyers, Emily. <laughs> uh, and they all said this is insane. There's no way with the size and scope of the case that six months is going to happen. So that's first and foremost. So we're talking 2024. The other is that they all, they all said that, look, the reason that there's so many defendants alongside the former president is because their hope is they're going to get one of them to flip yep. on President Trump. Mm -hmm. Kelly, what do you mean? Yeah, you know, what Brian said is very important. Uh, the basement strategy, that was 2020, hide from COVID in the basement, make no public appearances, you know, skirt out of one of the presidential debates, as happened because pre former President Trump got COVID. So it was an excuse to get rid of one of the three opportunities to view the candidates. The indictment strategy is the basement strategy. They're the same thing. You know, Biden, it, it's no mistake he put out his announcement video. And the next day, the mainstream media says, according to those familiar, he wants to be the background noise. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the background noise while all we do is talk about indictments. And look, there's a two-tier justice system. I fully believe that. Look at the Hunter Biden plea deal. Look at the whistleblower allegations. Um, you know, look at the DA who's now elevated to special counsel. He shouldn't have been the one appointed to special counsel. But even more importantly, as we look at this politically, we have a two tiered media. We have a two tiered media, right? Who spends 342 minutes on the third Trump indictment, just one of the indictments, 71 times more than the Biden malfeasances, that's according to Newsbusters. So, what do you think this two tiered media is going to talk about from today 
every single minute until November 5th, 2024. I watched CNN last night. I watched MSNBC flip in between all three networks. Ad nauseum, it's all they talked about. So it is incumbent upon the GOP to find out how do we get around this and talk about, yes, this is important. Two-tier justice is important. But you know what else is important? Americans paying $700 more every month because of inflation. The median price of houses going up 26%. My generation, millennials, not being able to afford homes. This is important. And former President Trump, if he's the nominee, he can find a way to do both. But it's got to be discipline. You've got to use those three presidential debates. You have to use every second of the Republican National Convention to focus on the issues. We must or we lose. We have a few seconds of MSNBC from last night with the uh, wife of a former president and the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton weighing in last night. Watch. Madam Secretary, fancy meeting you oh, here. Oh, I so can't nice believe this. <laughs> yeah, this is not the circumstances in which I expected to be talking to you. Nor me, Rachel. It's always good to talk to you, but honestly, um, I didn't think that it would be under these circumstances. Yet another set of indictments. I, I don't feel any satisfaction. I feel great, uh, you know, just, just great profound sadness that uh, we have a former president who has been indicted uh, for so many uh, charges that went right to the heart of whether or not our democracy would survive. Mm -hmm. So a couple of things. Uh, one of the questions Rachel Maddow has in one of her statements was, uh, we have to get to the point where every time we lose an election, we say it's, uh, they say it's illegitimate, it doesn't matter. She's actually saying that to Hillary Clinton sitting right across from him, right. who spent four years saying Donald Trump knows he's an illegitimate president, he didn't really win the election, and she sat there and cried about it for four years. And Stacey Abrams is, gov is not the governor of Georgia, last time I checked, but she believed she was, and people boycotted that state because of it, the movie industry on down. And there's nothing illegal, to your point, about asking questions about, about about an election. That is fair. That happens every election cycle from local to national politics. So uh, some of the charges that you read through, and again, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but when you read through it, you think, well, of, co of course questions were raised, questions were asked. That happens every four years, every two years. I don't see what's illegal about that. I think that that's fair game in politics. Let me just Correct say, me if I'm wrong, but. it's so gross to see her laughing, positively giddy. I watched mm -hmm. CNN after the third indictment. I flipped it on briefly, laughing. Cackling about this. Like, is this good for America, guys, to indict a former president? I remember Mark Levin saying his former boss, the attorney general, in the documents case, would have picked up the phone if it would have been a Democrat president and said, get those documents back to me. It's bad for the country. It's bad for parties. We're at a crucible point in our country where everyone's at one another's throats. Um, we had to diffuse the tensions. And watching Hillary Clinton laugh, CNN commentators laugh, this isn't a laughing moment. It's a sad moment for our country. And I think that's something we should all agree on. Well, they're gleeful because they think that their side is going to win based on this. Because of what you so brilliantly laid out, you and Brian, the, the basement strategy. The problem is things happen. And we just saw a president with a, a, you know, a beautiful place in our country, way to lace by fire, not have anything to say about that place being mm -hmm. laid to waste. He had nothing to say. He literally said no comment. I mean, that's not going to fly given where we are. Prices aren't just high on everything going up. But they're what they were last year, plus 3% more. I mean, that's where we are right now. People are hurting. And, and if we don't start to talk about that as a nation, it's going to get worse. I agree with Senator John so Kennedy true. of Louisiana last hour. People are not anesthetized to the pain right now. Only the president doesn't feel it. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.